Good morning everybody, it's Graham once again from Unearthed and this episode of Detecting Talk hopefully will cover a few different um, issues I guess is if that's the right word. Now firstly before I start I'd like to thank um, a lot of you guys out there for leaving reviews on the Unearthed website. Um, I did say a couple of films ago how useful it was for us to get feedback from you uh, kind people out there um, and uh, you know quite a few of you have left product reviews on the metal detectors and accessories that you've purchased over the last well I guess few years um, and it's heartwarming to see that we are doing our best to serve the detecting community um, so thanks very much for that if you've haven't done it and you want to do it just go onto the website the, the product review uh, and detector review is quite easy to find under a particular brand or a particular accessory so thank you very much for doing that um, any more would be welcome okay thanks very much for that guys uh, right uh, this weekend just gone uh, I attended a dealer UK dealer network conference in Leicester so Saturday and Sunday was pretty much taken up by by that and I have to say it was uh, very interesting for us personally at Unearthed, me and Melanie we both attended uh, on behalf of Unearthed uh, and we met the other UK dealers or m the vast majority of, of the other UK dealers so it was good to put some um, faces to names, names to faces and uh, some really interesting discussions so you know it's it's healthy and good I think that the UK dealers all seem to get on uh, fairly well uh, it was like I said it was very interesting for me personally and also the future is looking pretty bright for detectorists uh, I'm, I'm not going to say any more than that but uh, the future what we what we learned or what we picked up and the information I came away with um, the future of metal detecting is in pretty good hands regarding future machines and accessories etc so watch this space guys um, this episode of Detecting Talk, moving away from that now, is we were going to do another question and answer session. Um, now, I've got many, many questions and answer sessions, notes in front of me, but I'm not 100% sure if that last film went down as well as it should have. We got lots and lots of feedback from you guys, which is fantastic on the comments, but it didn't seem to sort of hit the spot with regards to many people watching it. So um, we have lots and lots of different topics to discuss on Detecting Talk, so we'll maybe put the detecting questions and answer sessions back a little bit for future films and concentrate on some of the other topics that are out there uh, waiting to be discussed. Now I would like on this episode some feedback from you guys once again on what you think but we're finding or me personally as a detectorist I find when I meet other detectorists and see what other detectorists are finding etc etc is there's a quite a lot of people still detect without using gloves so going back many decades ago we when we first started detecting the thought of putting gloves on all day on a hot day was pretty much well we, you know we're not used to wearing gloves when we were young but think about it logically that we, we all should be wearing gloves while we're out detecting now I watch quite a few guys detecting on the YouTube videos and they're all wearing gloves which is heartwarming but the reason why it's quite simple isn't it um, because there's that much hazard hazardous stuff in the ground you know you've got to be really careful so for example if you're digging pasture on a nice warm sunny day and you haven't got any gloves on and you stick the spade into the turf and you put your hand in to, to open up the flap and there's a bit of glass uh, sticking up you're going to cut yourself and it's happened to many many people but the, the key to it is this I think You've got to wear gloves, you've got to make sure you protect your skin, you've got to make sure you protect your hands. Now it's common sense and it shouldn't be up to me to tell you guys because a lot already do it. But there, there is, believe it or not, a lot of people out there that do not wear gloves whilst detecting. You've only got to think about what farmers, some farmers put on their land as fertilisers to realise if you're going detecting on uh, fields um, straight after the farmer has spread certain types of fertilizers and other things on there it's not going to be long until somebody picks up a nasty disease now there is a case study for this where we had a gentleman in Cumbria that used to and still does a lot of detecting um, 
was on a farm probably only 60 or 70 miles away from where I'm sat uh, and he the farmer had spread uh, a fertilizer on the particular fields he was detecting on which turned out to be the um, how do I put it the um, dregs of the septic tank on the farm so it was human sewerage that was being spread on the fields as a fertilizer now as a detectorist you're going to go where you want because you're enthusiastic you you're keen to get on the farmer did mention that he fertilized the field uh, a few days earlier but that didn't deter the detectorists to go on and of course detecting on that kind of stuff all day you've got to be really careful it transpired that a couple of hours after finishing detecting the gentleman in question felt rather unwell and ended up spending two weeks in hospital because of picking up some sort of horrendous infection internal infection which was rather dangerous uh, the doctors and the nurses at the hospital in the end um, managed to get him right but they traced it back to that particular day's detecting in amongst that human sewerage so you've got to be ultra careful guys what you're wearing make sure you protect yourself while you're out detecting and make sure you do the right thing by protecting at least the very least a decent set of gloves to stop the nasties getting in because you've also got to remember it's not just the fertilizers maybe the pesticides that some farmers put on uh, and spread um, you know you've got to be careful I suppose with that kind of stuff but there is glass you know historical glass in the ground from Victorian tips these end up on farmers fields we all know that because we all walk over it and find it from time to time so you've got to be careful what you're detecting on and what you're picking up and of course I've heard horror stories of things like needles being found whilst digging and other <coughs> dangerous sharp objects uh, you know so you've got to be really careful guys um, now I guess that for, for the detectorist out there that have been doing it a long time it's probably second nature to do that but there's a lot of new detectorists coming on the on the horizon that probably don't understand fully what it what it entails and what it means to protect yourself out in the field so i hope that is of help now the other thing is to remember as well is <clears throat> while we're talking about extracting things and being careful around um, certain things in the ground and nasties is from time to time a lot of detectorists come across things like ammo you know um, bullets uh, shells mortars all that kind of stuff You've got to be really careful on this uh, in this as well. Now, there's, there's been uh, in our local newspaper here where a detectorist found a bomb, didn't know what it was, uh, took it home with him. Uh, you know, you can laugh and joke all you want, but it's a serious, uh, it's a serious subject to discuss. He, you know, he didn't have a, have a clue what it was and, and ended up taking it, taking it home with him, rolling around in the back of his van. Now, I'm sure he won't mind me mentioning this if he watches this video, but it's a dangerous thing to do. He knows it's a dangerous thing to do, but there's a lot of newbies starting the hobby that don't understand what can be down there. You know, I've heard of grenades being found. I mean, I found a grenade myself about seven or eight years ago um, in a, a freshwater outlet. Um, and, you know, they can be anywhere. So just be aware and be careful, folks. Um, you know, live rounds that sort of thing you know they do exist in the soil so you've got to do the right thing uh, and keep away from it and flag it up to the authorities if you do come across anything dangerous such as these unexploded devices bombs or whatever you want to call them you have got to be careful so um you know do the right thing uh while we're on the subject of protecting ourselves as well is <clears throat> and this might sound a little bit crazy but uh, i think there's method in the madness a lot of detectorists end up detecting outdoors in the heat at some point now a lot of my detecting is in the colder months uh cooler months wetter uh and which is which is fine it suits me better than detecting in the heat but you know from time to time the weather's favorable and we end up detecting in up, upwards of 30 degrees of heat which is uh, uh for somebody built uh, like i am up in the north uh, i'm not used to that sort of heat so i'd rather have 11 12 degrees or less rather than 30 but you've got to take uh, you've got to take each day as it comes and we mourn when it when it rains and it's cold so you can't win but detecting that sort of heat has its own hazards now i always remember about 10 years ago going back a decade i was down in um norfolk detecting and it was absolutely baking because the southeast predominantly weather-wise is much better and more favorable than it, it is here in the north and it was red hot it was 30 degrees and i decided to detect in my wisdom most of that day 
and of course there's no trees for shelter it's relatively flat land you know the sun's on you pretty much from the minute you get out of the car to the minute you get back but one thing that one mistake that I made I didn't have enough fluid you know I had a little bottle of water which I took out in the field with me I thought that would have been enough just to a sip of that every half hour or so that went within an hour and a half so I spent the rest of the day parched you know I had another bottle of water I had to go back to the car that disappeared rather quick and the rest of the afternoon I was absolutely dehydrated and when I got back to the car the first thing we did is drive to the local garage and we bought about five litres of water each and ended up just dropping it down as it was absolutely horrendous and it made you feel pretty much pooly and ill so if there's a tip I can give people is in the summer months make sure you take water out take it out in the field with you put it in your fines pouch have it somewhere on your body because there's nothing worse than becoming dehydrated and of course you're not thinking you're going to be dehydrated because all you're worried about and thinking about and concentrating on is detecting and making fines while all along that sun's burning away and making you dehydrated so <clears throat> a lot of new guys to the hobby suffer from it um, I suffer from it even though I've been detecting probably 20 or 30 years at that point and it was a massive mistake that I made and a mistake that I would never make again I take 12 bottles of water in my pack in the back of my pickup now purely because if we get caught out again at least we've got the <coughs> liquid to rehydrate us out in the field so I hope that sort of goes somewhere towards uh, helping people understand that you've got to make sure you take liquid out when you're in the field it's a no-brainer now the other thing as well while we're talking about detecting in the heat is protecting your face now a lot of people wear hats um you know to put obviously to protect that to protect themselves their caps from the sun but I also think that a lot of people make the mistake and I'm one of them is not bringing some sun cream with you to protect your face now our faces and necks and everything else arms you know, when we're wearing t-shirts and things detecting in the heat you come back home after a day's detecting the first thing your missus says is you know like you've been abroad your face you know your, your your skin is red or brown you know really healthy look but it can't be particularly good for the skin if you're not if you're not wearing protective cream so i always bring a factor 20 or whatever it is a factor 15 cream out with me rub it on my nose rub it on my face and my neck and my arms i'm protected it's all it takes so I always think it's best to take a bit of suntan cream with you guys a bit of protection cream out in the field with you and then you haven't got to worry about the uh, the threat of maybe developing some sort of skin cancer in the future because that's how serious it is uh, us you know us northerners we're not used to that sort of sun so it can absolutely play havoc with your skin so if that's another tip I can give you guys take some suntan cream out here in the field when it's red hot it's only a little only a little tube white paste rub it on your hands all over your face and neck and arms sorted happy days so water gloves suntan cream you're covered you're covering yourself now i hope this doesn't sound patronizing to people because you guys a lot of you guys already do this kind of thing and it'll be interesting to see how some of you people that watch these films deal with the your, the heat yourselves and uh, you might do what everything that i've just said you might do it all you might not do any of it but uh, it will be interesting for some feedback from you as good people to see how you deal with the heat, the dreaded heat. I know there's a lot of detectorists out there that don't even bother detecting in the heat because it's too much for them, and you can blame them. But when you know beggars can't be choosers, and the window's there for you to get out for a day's detecting, you're going to take it. So protect yourself, folks. I hope that helps. A bit of a health and safety uh, link uh, theme going on in this particular film. Um, now the next episode is going to be Friday. I hope you guys watch it. Um, and we're not 100% sure what the theme's going to be. We may do questions and answers. We may go back to one of the original uh, topics of when I discussed we're going to be doing it around speed and detectorists detecting at certain speeds. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Thanks very much for watching. Before you go, before you disappear, we're at the Loon Valley Rally up near Hadrian's Wall this Sunday. So any of you guys attending that, uh, come and say hello to us we'll have the uh, unearthed event shelter i won't be detecting on the day folks i'll be hopefully talking to many detectorists we'll have a little bit of a trade stall going on and uh, it'll be good to see you there weather permitting okay thanks for watching folks and i'll catch up with you guys very soon take care bye for now